Pete Holmes is on the podcast today. And I got to say, I've, I loved talking to Pete Holmes. Wow. Talk about a special. We talk about God, lack thereof. You decide. Uh, before we get to Pete Holmes, real quick, a little housekeeping. June 28th, I'm going to be in Erie, Pennsylvania at the Warner Theater. July 6th, 2024, I am going to be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. This is all new material, guys. July 17th, 2024, I'll be in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival with the Great Outdoors. See, Bert. <laughs> Kreischer. I also have a new special out. It's on OF.TV. Um, very easy to get to. Don't panic. Don't freak out. Just put in your browser, OF.TV. Is it a slash or a dash? We always fight about this. Forward slash Whitney. That's just my name. You'll go right to it. It's free. You're not going to see any nudity. I don't know if that's good news or bad news, but the TV side is completely different from the OnlyFans side. Enjoy it. And now enjoy the great Pete Holmes. Bap, bap, bap. I've done this podcast for a little while. Yeah. You haven't been on it yet. No. I'm going to just. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad. I'm just. I'm, I'm on it and I'm. I'm going to say something. Yes. That we can cut out if you want. Sure. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I already ran it by Pat. Pat loved it. I'm not going to take his <laughs> advice. Pat said, don't say it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I. One of my biggest. Like. <laughs> Regrets. I, no, <laughs> I have had this thing in my head for a really long time that, that you. I don't think you like me. Oh, what is this? I, WTF? No, <laughs> no. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's my nightmare to be confrontational. Are we good? It's really. Oh no, I don't feel confrontational. But isn't that a lot of Mark's episodes? They're like airing, airing it out. Yeah, totally. And that's yeah. not what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And I think something that with you, you and I both. Had I, I don't want to insult you by saying we've had a similar career, but we both like had shows with our name on it, and then we both like did talk shows. Yeah. And I think I've always been kind of embarrassed around you. Oh. Embarrassment being one of my probably my biggest thing, right? Sure. A quote I love about comedy is we become comedians to control how we're embarrassed. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I think that you're one person I can't hide from. Like, you know, when you have a TV show and people are like, oh, you're doing like I can't hide how bad I wanted it. I can't hide uh, how hard I tried. I can't hide. Because there's another gargoyle next to well, you. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the skulls of every failed pilot creator. <laughs> like you uniquely know how much work it takes to get what we both got, how bad you have to want it, how hard it is to lose it. Yeah, that is embarrassing. Like, there's very few people that I can really say. I mean, Seinfeld had a different situation. Like we've, sure. other people have had shows, but yeah. we kind of were like, not trying to do the same thing at the same time. I'm not saying this perfectly. It's interesting. Uh, you've always been inspiring to me. I've always kind of seen did, did you. Those, get the, uh, get the fuck, get the, get the. I always saw you as someone that I could never be like, oh no, I'm just, it's like, I'm not trying that hard. I'm kind of. Like you're one of the few uh, people that I'm like, oh, he knows. He can see. <laughs> he knows that I have pick me energy. He knows that I'm a try hard. He knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows that I'm getting a note. I drew a... to be more likable, and I'm taking it. <laughs> he knows wrote... I'm changing the joke for the executive. Yeah, like yeah, he yeah. knows. Yeah, no, I understand that, but it's that's completely unfounded. I drew a cartoon can... for the New Yorker. No, I mean I'm telling you, you have nothing to feel weird about, and I'm not. Well, I'll find something else then. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe, I believe it. <laughs> never underestimate our brain's ability. That's really surprising to me. I wouldn't, I never would have thought of us on the same. I, I, I think of you as well ahead of me. Yeah. That's interesting. Like old. <laughs> <laughs> like near the grave. Like musty, yeah, like yeah. dusty. Sort of like, yeah. Oh, look, there's I BR just, So there. I just <laughs> called you old in my trying yeah, to go. I'm, I'm I put you on a pedestal by trying to give you a huge compliment. I just, I just called, called you, you old. And then I called you old, which is terrible. <laughs> We're really just killing each other. No, but I just thought of you ahead of me. I mean, when I saw that you made a show, Bro to Broke Girls, mm. and like produced it, I was like, oh, that was very interesting to me oh, and, and inspiring to me. I was like, I didn't even consider that we could do that. That seemed really cool to me. And I had friends on that show and I'd be like, is Whitney in the room? And they were like, they said you were, but it didn't seem like you were, you had to be there every single day. And well, like, I couldn't because I was doing the other one simultaneously, right. but I think really cool. you were doing a talk show and another show simultaneously, I think. No. Or something. I don't think I ever did anything simultaneously. Okay. Not like you did. 
But I thought that was really cool. So you've always just been an inspiring figure to me. And I don't have that. I don't look at you with uh, disgust, which is what I'm hearing <laughs> the fear is. No, if we can name it. <laughs> I think I just have always thought. Or as, you, as an, a blind ambition monster. I think I've always thought you're so cool. And you're, and it, you just, it, you talked about this on, I think Neil's or on um, maybe Rich Roll's. Is it Richard Roar's that we're all screens and we project onto each other? I mean, a, a pretty much any spiritual person would probably say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that maybe I've projected onto you a yeah. little bit because yeah. I've always just been a fan and I just think you're so cool <laughs> and have always wanted to be your friend in a way that's uh -huh. a little, Try no, when, hard. When you did my talk show, I remember being quite starstruck that you were there and touched that you did it because it was a little, I'm not saying this disparagingly, but like so few people were watching it when we were at the rehearsals, there'd normally be an executive sleeping in the back row, <laughs> literally <laughs> sleeping. And in the pilot, the first episode of my talk show, I said fuck and they didn't bleep it. This is how few people, what? even the censors no. weren't watching it. No. And then sometimes, like no one viewed it. I said fuck, and it just went out. That's a that's a lack of viewership internally. You know, you know, when I was so my first writing job was on Last Call with Carson Daly, uh -huh. and I would do these like correspondent pieces, and the whatever the bit I had pitched to do, we needed to play Thriller by Michael Jackson, uh -huh. and it was before I knew like you can't just. Play, play thriller, thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they're like oh this would be like eight. and i was like and the producer was like let's just put it in and you did <laughs> we played it. and it was fine no one noticed yeah that's carson no one cared that's, that's pete holmes show carson daly <laughs> totally. stuff right there not uh, that it, we weren't even a, uh, i'm not putting down Carson. i'm just saying we weren't yeah, even yeah. that big we were a small show and that was I, I think back on it so fondly but the people that came through to do it mm. and you were being one of them was really meaningful to me like oh, kumail was the first guest he was the first guest on my podcast as well this is before Kumail got so big in both ways. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> in both ways. Literally and physically. Yeah, I yeah. do think back then, though, correct me if I'm wrong, there felt like a little more of a bifurcation in like alt comedy and mainstream comedy. And I think I maybe thought you could so easily go back and forth. Yeah. And I, I felt like I struggled with going back and forth. That's interesting. But that's just because of when I started. You're going to agree with me that I've been wronged <laughs> somehow by your coolness. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm not being falsely humble. No, I don't. When I think about myself, I don't typically think the word cool. And that that's not so my persona. Yeah, I'm not being like. <laughs> I'm that's just like, I have similar feelings where I look at other people and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. or that's like Rolling Stone. Like I'd never be on Rolling Stone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Cool. That, that, I don't, we all have different benchmarks for what cool is. To me, I think cool is like original, like an original thinker, maybe. Yeah. Mm. You know, not derivative of anyone. Like I would always watch your stand up, and I wouldn't be like, oh, he's doing a tell or he's doing Geraldo or he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was always like, yeah. this well, is really just nice. an original. You know, it's an interesting time that I, what I, what I started to say was when I was coming up in stand up, there was, there were the the dwarves and the elves, and the dwarves were like the club comics. They were mm -hmm. like, rah, rah, yeah. ale in their beards, and <laughs> eating ham. And yeah. then the elves were the alt people. They were gentler, uh -huh. but also a little bit faster on yep. their feet and and weird. Yeah. And and but I came in the scene while that boundary was sort of dissolving. Places started closing in New York, so you couldn't go up at Rafifi anymore. So you had to go into the clubs. Mm. And then you started seeing people like Bill Burr, who's who's a, a great hero of mine. He would come into the Boston and he would go to an alt room and do the same act. And I started being like, oh, this is where it's at. Mm. I used to have a set list where my regular club bits, bits that would work anywhere, either place would be written in regular. And then the bits that would only work in alt places would be written in italics. And I would look at my set That's list and so be like, funny. well, I can't do that here. And I was right. Meaning, it's like what I was saying about the God bit and the uh, nothing makes any sense bit. The fucking the stool was for the clubs. Yeah, yeah, maybe, <laughs> for sure. And the stool is made of Adams is yes, for the exactly. alt rooms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm fucking Adams right yeah. now. But like what it is is I, I have such a, a heart for comedians and for jokes. And what kills me is when you see people doing good jokes in the wrong place. It doesn't mean they're dumb. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I remember Big J said that to me. We were watching some, we're at the Boston, a club in the West Village of Manhattan, very confusing. 
and Jay's there looking like somebody covered him in honey and rolled him through a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> he, I love Jay, but he's there. He was wearing fingerless, the fingerless gloves, gloves and, that he know. got at the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, and, he, yeah. and he's sitting there, and, and he, Jay would like that. I think. <laughs> but he goes, "We're watching somebody eat shit, doing a very, very mm. old set that I knew was good. He he probably knew it was good, but she was eating shit, and he just went, know your audience.' And I was like, he's right. Uh -huh. But then, and I remember bombing in Germantown, Wisconsin, opening for Jim Gaffigan. I was very lucky to open for Jim and Bill in my first three years of stand-up. It was huge. My friend Dan Kaufman got me those gigs. Shout out to Dan, great guy. And anyway, we both ate shit. And the MC, who will remain nameless, but I remember his name, very roadie name. <laughs> I wish I could say it. It doesn't matter. It might as well be like Woodpecker <laughs> Hellboy. So, I was going to say, you know, it's it was, like Worm McGilla Smith. Yeah, it was something, Smith. even yeah. the name was fun. Yeah, 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 Beetle. He did great. And then I went up. No, 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 I was hosting. I ate shit. Beetle murdered. <laughs> Jim Gavigan ate shit. So I'm watching one of my heroes, Jim Gavigan, eating shit. <laughs> it's a late Friday in Germantown, Se Wisconsin. Second show Friday, always brutal. I know. So it, this isn't, I'm, I, I just learned that you can say dragging. I'm not dragging Jim. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know, I'm not putting him down. Okay. I'm saying like, we both did badly. Yes. We're both sweating. He'd agree. They were saying meow to him, you know, from Super Troopers. They were going, sure. meow, meow. They wouldn't stop saying it. Brutal. And Jim got off, and this is in my first five years of stand-up, very formative years. Jim told me two things on this weekend. I remember a lot. One, he said, uh, there are some crowds you don't want to kill for. And that was huge. Love I didn't, that. I had never heard that. I was just like, I thought we were cake. And cake is delicious to everyone. Look, I'm not for everyone. That's the, that's sort of what I'm saying is wow. like, if you are for everyone, you're not for me. Mm -hmm. So you're not for everyone. Yeah. Because like, I don't like things that are for like, everyone. Like if you think I'm funny, I should hate myself. <laughs> That's right. So we both ate shit. And, and, and for the first time in my life, I was like, oh, my God, I felt good mm. for bombing. I felt like I was in the, the better, not the better. I was in the group I wanted to be. Yep. In. And then Jim Gavigan becomes a stadium comedian. And those people fucking hated him. So who's right? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. But Jim started figuring out who he was for. The other thing he told me, I remember that weekend. I was supposed to do 10 minutes, which is impossible. Impossible. And I wanted to do 10 minutes. And then they gave me like five minutes of announcements, like Tuesday is Wacky Hat Day and all this sure, shit. Sure, sure, sure. So I did my set. Then I do the announcements. And they're like, you went long. And I was like, but I, I did the announcements. And they're like, the announcements count towards your time. And I felt humiliated because as, as, as much of a confident blowhard I can seem, I was very fragile and I felt bad. That's also like just a power. It's five minutes. Eat shit. It's also. No, no, no. The correct response is eat shit. I can't say that. But this you know, is MC just someone who that. it's incredible. Sorry to just get so granular, but I think people are into it. Um, is that we don't have a union. Yeah. We don't have a, every a club. There's some franchises. It would have been great if we had a union. A Jimmy Hoffa type goes, <laughs> the announcements don't count for this time. The kid does his act. You want less time? Trim the announcements. And he breaks his knees. I would have loved that. I, I just mean like, these are just people that start comedy clubs in yeah. random places, probably wanted to be comedians. Who knows whatever yeah. founder syndrome they have. Like I've dealt with so many club owners in the beginning like who just will power play you for no reason. Yeah. And you're just like, I became a comedian because I'm trying to get love from junk strangers. Yeah. Why are you bullying me about yeah. you? And you look back now and you're like, I see what that person was yeah, doing. Yeah, well, in a way they were doing what we're all doing. I was going for love by doing my set. They were going for a feeling of superiority. Sure, because he could have gone like, ah, next time do you mind? He, yeah. There's just a way that could have been communicated. I'm at the point where I'm like, there's no such thing as bad news. There's no such thing as saying, it's yeah. the way you say it. No, I agree because we need you to do 10 minutes, including the announcements, isn't actually a, You a weren't mean clear thing to say. in the first place. Yeah, I, hey, I wasn't clear, so sorry. Yeah. Wait, wait. It's just pick on someone your own. I, I hate that totally. shit. But then Jim, who was my Jimmy Hoffa, they left the room and I'm, I'm there. I, I feel like, you know, an inch tall. I, I, I'm, I'm not good with confrontation, so I feel bad. And Jim goes, he leans over. Jim doesn't really know me that well. And he goes, in five years, they'll be begging for it. Can you, can you give this man a cake? Can we send him a cake? He's just the best. But these He's little the angels, you know what I mean? These tiny kindnesses. And I, I, I try to do that as much as I can, mm. but it was, and it was done for me. And it's so lonely. Bill was the same way. Bill, I remember I was talking about that I, I, I was married at the time, my first wife, and I, I, he was trying to help me. I didn't mm. realize it, but he was like, 
He's like, why don't you, why don't you have any jokes about your wife? <laughs> and I was like, because I love my wife. And he goes, that's your angle. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am 20 years later and I have a hunk about like, I love my wife. And like, isn't that, you're not going to hear that a lot. I say that in the special. I go, you're not going to hear that a lot no. at comedy shows. And that is the angle. But that's like, that's, you know, the difference between middling and headlining, that being the second comic on the show who's opening for the headliner, is the headliner, you got to like go further. Yeah. And Bill was telling me, go further. Mm. Don't be afraid. Yeah. And I'm not trying to force this. That's very spiritual. It's like, accept yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't resist. You're innocent. Yeah. yeah. Go up and show them even your, your flaws. Just, and show it I and just, laugh at I it. I just saw it's this. Beautiful. Someone, uh, Rick Rubin, just sent me this Instagram of Joni Mitchell talking um, about creativity. And she said, if you have writer's block, it means you're afraid to say how you feel right now. Uh, that's pretty good. That's all it is. Yeah. You're just afraid to say I, how you feel right now. I'll tell you this. If you have writer's block, I bet you go to bed and you still have an evening's worth of dreams, mm -hmm. which means you have the capacity and the natural ability to create mm -hmm. huge yeah. Multi twisting story arcs, and your dad is a clown, and, mm -hmm. and you're yelling at your brother. It's all in there. I, but if I, I, I'd rather say I have writer's block because otherwise I'd probably just have to like cry. No, exactly right. Yeah. This is my out I, to not have to feel stuff. Believe me, I get it. I, it I'm going to blame a fake wall, a <laughs> fake block. Like, what does that even mean? A block? A writer's block? What I, does that even mean? I always picture tofu. Like I, oh, thing. really? <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny my <laughs> wife is not a comedian and i've watched she rubs off on me so much i call her she's like i call her a love genius she's just a genius at loving people mm. and she's taught like i feel like bigfoot i'm like friend like she teaches me <laughs> uh -huh. how to be a friend and uh -huh. not to be a sociopath and all these things i don't i'm not a sociopath no, you know no, 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 no. connect with people engage with people not always think about your work and all that. she really re she rescued me from the weird woods and i rescued myself i was yes, smart enough course, to go with course. her but but the wanna... jungle of just like, of I just, just I'm a knife in your teeth. I'm, and... <laughs> I'm talking to this person and just yeah. trying to steal their personality yeah. for a script. Yeah, exactly. Instead, Look just... how Whitney's doing her hands. I should have the mom <laughs> character in that script. She should be doing this. I'm, you know, what? I'm insulted. You said mom, I even know, though I'm, I'm pregnant. Sorry. I, I know. I'm like literally a mom, and I'm like, you're not old it's enough to play a mom mind. yet. It's on my mind. Not a TV mom. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could be a play mom. Like theater, it could be like a like a commercial model, well, maybe yeah. like bouncy paper towels, yeah, yeah, like yeah. maybe Sunny D. Yeah, but <laughs> Val, what was I saying? Val, Val is a love genius. Yeah, teaches you saying... how to comport yourself in the world. Yeah, but I was oh something I taught her. So I was saying she ta teaches me a lot, and I one of the things that I've watched her. You wouldn't think, or at least I don't think people would think that living with a comedian would actually be psychologically very healthy because. All I do is practice being okay with how I feel, mm. so much so that I can say it to people and deal with it. I say, you know, the, I do the shows for free. The money is for me going back to my hotel and being like, why did I say that about my mom? That's what you're getting. <laughs> that's what the money is for. But it's actually <laughs> the beautiful shame work. afterburn. You said it because that's how you feel sometimes. And it's good to let that out. So I watch my wife. She, she was already hilarious, but I'm watching her like, get comfortable with like a dark joke or something. She'll make a dark joke about something that she's going through. And I'm like, that's the stuff. That's the lightsaber that like, mm -hmm. goes right through it. Like make a fucking brutal joke about the darkest thing in your life. Yep. And you're like, therapy or the clown? <laughs> therapy or the clown, your yeah. choice. But yeah. We'll teach you the same thing. And not all comics, but comics have taught, like Big J. So another, I've told this story many times, but the biggest shame of my life was that I was uh, like, I, I used to joke, I never sat on stage because I don't know, but I go, as a Christian, I had to come out as straight. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like it's, it's just as mm -hmm. embarrassing to yeah. be like, vagina, I like it. You know, like you, you had to yeah, be like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember at the time I was like, God, it was brutal. It's so weird. It's like thinking about another person. I was always trying to not jerk off. I was always trying to not look at pornography, which has just become so available on the internet. And it was embarrassing. Uh, and the shame that I carried around. And one time we're at the cellar. I'm not going up. I'm just hanging out, getting bullied. And uh, that's what you should be ashamed of. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's so much worse. That than, was the self. Yeah, that's issue, mental really. masturbation. Yeah. BDSM. Yeah. Really. Like, wow. Okay. They don't even have a porn for you. No. No. <laughs> you and I was getting off on both. Yeah. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. More hummus. 
<laughs> There's no amount of hummus I, that can soothe the burn from Walking me. toward the table at the cellar where the comics are, I mean, I, I, got, I have to like stretch first. Yeah, of course. I still am like, oh yeah, I just don't, it's fine. Like, And then it's so much nicer now. Josh Gondelman is there. <laughs> You it's just I mean? it's like it's it's so much sweeter. I, I like don't know it. what that walk is just it's like walking down the hallway of high school. I get it. It's going to the first hardware first day. It's going to the hardware store for milk is what it is. Is you're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get love here. And then you're like, I, I'm all about hanging with comics and I do sit at the table and I like it. But at a certain point, if something isn't working, you have to ask yourself, why do I keep doing it? Mm -hmm. And you have to ask yourself if you're unconsciously reenacting the trauma mm -hmm. patterns of your youth. Mm -hmm. Is it familiar yes. for you to be abused? Or I, I'm saying lowercase a abuse, sure, but sure. like, if do you like someone being mean to you? And around the time I met Val, my wife, I was like, my wife, I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't have to do this. Like sure. there's other kinds of, there's and, other flavors of people. And the narcissism of thinking they're even care that you're walking toward the, or, yeah. or them going, Whitney's coming, she did the roast. Is she gonna make fun of me? Yeah. It's either they're just as insecure as you are, or they're the my therapist always saying, like, we're obsessed with what people think about us until we realize they're just not. Yeah. They're just doing other things. Like, oh, Whitney's here. Great. I thought you I took narcissism from another way. I, I would take it because at least they were paying attention to me. Mm. It was negative attention. Sure. But like, it was, I was getting it. I'm a piece of shit in the center of the universe. I exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I exist at least. This guy knows I'm or he calls me that guy or whatever. But uh, But I'm using them to hurt myself. I'm yeah. like, I'm just using you to cut myself. There's just much better ways to, you know, feel love. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's it's just an old, like, old thing. And anyway, I agree continue. with that with comedy, too. It's like, you don't have to. There's a know, certain point where <laughs> I realize this sometimes when I'm like, I have a complicated relationship with social media. Everyone does and probably should, frankly. Um, but when I post, sometimes I'll be like, what if Chris Rock sees it? Like, I, I, one, I'll think of one person's approval. And I feel like yeah. sometimes as a comic, when you're like, okay, I know how to get laughs. I know how to be funny. Now I'm kind of just doing this, like, is will Bill think this is funny? <laughs> like, you yeah, start yeah. sort of looking for respect from your peers. Well, because if the journey's over, you're you're dead. Mm -hmm. Or that's what your fear is. Yeah, like I found a new daddy every <laughs> yeah. month. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, not to diagnose you, I would say Please. I do. <laughs> Please. I would do that type of behavior and I would recognize or I would try to recognize uh, it's actually we're not afraid of hell. We're afraid of, of heaven. We're afraid mm. of being OK. Yes. So yes. It's like I'm OK. It's OK to be a okay. lot of a lot of the very, very, very wealthy people I know get obsessed with recycling. And I'm like, of course, because there's got to be something. You know what I mean? Oh, so you're out there. You're out there taking the sleeve off the coffee cup because there has to be a problem. Sure, 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 sure. You'd rather be. Uh, I need to recreate miserable this. and exist than blissful and and in your ego's mind gone. And sometimes that's a legitimate adrenaline addiction. Like you know, the twelve step program that I'm in, ACA, is about the internal drug cabinet. You know, I'm with like, WME, but yeah. okay. <laughs> I hate your ACA? Guns. They book your tour dates? I hate your guts. <laughs> ACA? I hate Which your one guts. is that? <laughs> I hate your guts. I hate your guts. I hate your guts. It's such a funny <laughs> phrase. I it's, hate your guts. I do. <laughs> what is ACA? ACA, adult children of alcoholics. Oh, okay. Just mean you grew up in any kind of yeah, chaos yeah, yeah, yeah. for alcoholism to be present. Alcohol doesn't have to be present. No, no, I've, be... I've been to Alan on you. Okay, great. So it's ACA. It's kind of the more like focused version. We, I, I love that we are basically in there for our perfectionism, our workaholism, our mothering, micromanaging, martyring. And when yeah. you say Al-Anon, I have to be like, well, there's a, it's a better version of it. I mean, it's like the more <laughs> yeah, sure. tra traumatized version. Yeah. Just I have to like <laughs> qualify that I had it harder or something. Yeah, okay. um, but it's uh, like every program thinks they're the graduate program. Of course. You know, course. sex and love addicts. They'll be like, well, it's a graduate program. And we're like, well, it's a graduate program. NA is like, we're the graduate program, whatever. Oh, wow. um, and so we do what we can. But um, the internal drug cabinet. So instead of doing using heroin or cocaine or whatever yeah. it is, it's the creating chaos, adrenaline, being yeah. in toxic relationships to get that hit of cortisol, adrenaline, which turns into dopamine. Right. So you're kind of subconsciously just, you know, if you have to be somewhere at five, it takes a half hour to get there. You leave at 4.30. Like a big part of recovery is going like you leave at 415 to allow yeah. for life to happen. And right. so that you're not like, oh, constantly in right. that mode. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Richard Rohr says we're all addicts. He's big in the AA world. And he says we're all addicted to our own way of thinking. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, that is isn't that good. You know what else I'll say about addiction is talk about uh, attention. 
I, I don't uh, drink anymore. I didn't I didn't go through the program, but I have a great respect for it. I'm not trying to co-opt it. Sure, I'm just sure, saying sure. I, I'm familiar with their teachings. Mm-hmm. And you um, go to Soul Cycle. I go to Soul Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how many things... on a real bike. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I just do laps around them and go. You guys are going nowhere. <laughs> You guys are going nowhere. <laughs> this is the graduate program. I'm doing skids. The teacher's like, Peter. It's amazing how, I don't know if this is just an LA thing, but every cult exercise class just says AA slogans now. Oh, really? Yeah. One day at a time, guys. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it works if you work it. It's all that. Wow. If you want to get something you've never gotten, you got to do something you've never done. It's like, if it's hysterical, it's historical. Like, it's just, wow. and you're like, this is just AA, but like, why do I have to be the AA snitch? No, they're all very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, truth is truth. Yeah. Uh, but what I would say about alcohol when I used to drink is I was like, that was the only thing that gave me as much attention on demand as I wanted. Mm. You know what I mean? I would drink it and it would, it's, it's doing you. You know what I mean? It's not ignoring you. It's interesting. It like, might be horrible. It might give you a hangover, but it's like, uh, at least it's fucking you up. I think my biggest fear being embarrassment is kind of what saved me from having a drinking problem because I, I, I the main addiction. I, I just have a joke about that. Tell I me. go, I like to drink alone, fewer people to apologize to. Genius. And that is, that was back when I wasn't uh, strong in myself enough to do a joke like that. Mm. So I think I had it and I never did it. But I was Ooh. like, that's what Bill Burr would be like. That's the angle. That's the one to do, of but course. But it is. But, but now I don't drink, so I can't do it. Fuck. I'll have to start drinking. You, to do it. No, or just but it, say it. But that embarrassment, I, that it, not to make it about me and Please. drinking, I'm just saying like, I would do a show where there was free booze, go home and drink at home. I know, mm. And I have a very a hyper rational mind where I'd just be like, in this regard, I'd be like, why would I want you to see me being like, you look like my uncle. <laughs> like, why would I want that? Go home, uh-huh. talk to John Wick. Yep, yep. He doesn't remember anything. <laughs> it's like when I had food stuff, which, yeah. you know, you're eating the sheet cake alone in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not going to order the dessert at a restaurant where, like, I'm I, like, this is about accumulating as much shame as possible and making it building a secret. Right. It has right. to be in secret. Right. Yeah. No, it wants to get the you. proper, yeah, shame hit. Just you. And also drinking and doing drugs. Like, I've always been so insecure that I'm not smart. And I'm like, why would I do something that makes me less smart mm. in public in front of people? That's it. I that I completely understand. And that. also something of when you have restrictive eating, you don't want to drink. Like sometimes it's funny when one addiction saves you from another addiction, which is like you don't want to drink if yeah. you're restricting food because it's just you're just looking at his calories. Yeah, no, I've done that. Yeah. You're like, I don't drink because I I'm anorexic. I had a joke about that too. I was like, I'm doing a juice fast. And I was, and I go, mostly fermented. Which was true. Cause at the end of a day of juice fasting, I would drink wine. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> But when you drank, did you like the the definition or what I would hear a lot in doubles winners meetings is when I drank, I felt normal. I felt that a little bit with weed, which is why I had to put the weed down a little oh, bit because yeah. I was like, this is how everyone else thinks. Yeah. Everyone else is just present and in the moment and accepts themselves and they're not worrying about things. Yeah. And I was like, this can't be good. I have with weed. I have a fail safe there because it does make me so foggy. So I'll, if I smoke weed, which I actually did a couple nights ago, and it was great, mm. mostly because the day after I'll, I'll have a weed hangover, and it just makes me like, I'm like you're saying, I'm just like, hello, like, yeah, I'm just yeah. like right there. <laughs> There's a line at that grocery store, <laughs> fiddle dee dee. You know what I mean? Just it's like, nice to just totally be kind like, of dumb sometimes too. I loved it. It was great. It was fine. But the problem is, uh, I, I don't feel the the pull mm. with weed mm. because if I if then I smoke it the next day. Then I like I have a show tonight. I'll go up on stage and I won't be able to do what I do. And I'm like, well, that addiction is way better. No, but work is work wins. Every work time. wins. And also just being able to like, I feel like it takes effort to be. In fact, I don't think I, I definitely believe it takes effort and energy to be happy, to like make the right, even the right mental frameworks and choices. And how am I going to think about this? And if I'm stoned or certainly when I was hungover you'd just be kind of like we are all fucked you know what <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, it yeah, was easier yeah. to go that way so i was just like try to find uh better addictions I, I i don't think i don't think i'm doing stand-up i used to in the beginning i would do stand-up solely for the hit for the like they saw me razzle dazzle mm-hmm. and i don't feel that as much anymore it feels more compartmentalized that's something i do mm-hmm. but i don't do it 
I try to do it as little as possible. Can I ask about your like regimen for that work that goes into being happy? Is it like a, a, you wake up, you pr- like, do you have a, yeah, sure. before you start your day? I mean, you're right on the money, right? Every It's all about the beginning. Mental hygiene. Yeah. I find, talk about <laughs> familiar <laughs> trauma patterns. I, I do cold exposure. Uh, do you know that? Is it the cold plunge or yeah, the cryo freeze? Cold plunge. You're just getting in the water. Getting in that water. Doing the damn thing. And I love it. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I have some theories on why I love it, but like, that is a that when you start your day by doing something that you didn't want to do doing something hard yeah. yep it's funny i this isn't an aa thing but i always val and i always say the thing you want is on the other side of something you don't want and that's just a law of mm-hmm. the universe of yeah. this weird thing we're doing yeah like it's why heroin doesn't work you know what i mean mm-hmm. like the way the receptors of your brain work they burn out they multiply now you need more and Sometimes you die. It doesn't sure, work. Sure. Like the feel good buttons don't work. Mm-mm. But what does work is uh, consenting to something unpleasant that then rewards you with something pleasant. I would I would c- categorize stand up as that as well. You know, there are different altitudes to fly at, and you can choose which one we do. Yeah. We're talking about a low altitude, like an earth, like an earth altitude. Like I like cold plunge stuff. It it boosts my oxytocin and well, all the good feel good stuff. S- Getting in the hot tub afterwards is incredibly wonderful. I know that's very privileged that I have a cold plunge. Because then tub I just go, are we already can... happy? Because we have a there's a hot tub. Like just knowing. No, you... okay. I know a lot of miserable motherfuckers with hot that's tubs. That's a really good point. <laughs> in fact, more of the people I know that own hot tubs are miserable. Uh, right, right. So I was just gonna say you can just take a cold shower, then take a hot shower. That, yeah, yeah. That, that's just as well. But um, the other altitude that I was just gonna float your way because it seems like you might enjoy this. I don't think the ego. This idea of Whitney Cummings or this idea of Pete, which is really just an amalgamation of what your past, your physiology, your psychology, your the way your brain works. Look at your face right now. <laughs> I really you do. You look terrified. I am, no, I am like a big fan of your brain and I'm excited what you're going to no, say. I hope you like it. And I'm trying to not formulate a res- it's part of my job to be ready to oh, say oh i know so- but i'm to- a podcaster you don't have to i know to be ready to say something <laughs> after you say something but i genuinely want to be in out. the moment and listening no i understand i struggle with the same thing too as i'm talking I'm about twi- <laughs> this is the first time i've ever listened to someone well <laughs> and i'm just like <laughs> you're like me with that twitching listening. <laughs> i'm like i say to val i'm like how are you working them she's like what you know, what do you would? I'm like, all these like <laughs> retorts and comebacks. I'm just trying to like bat them all away. Jealousy, all of it. I'm genuinely just. No, you're going to. On I, camera listening. It's never happened. I think it's important. The ego can't be satisfied. It's like Sadhguru says this. If you own the entire earth, everything was yours. How long before you want Mars? Mm-hmm. You do you would. It's just how the ego works. Mm. More, more, more. Never enough. Never enough. And the people who own hot tubs, they get obsessed with their recycling. So it's this endless. It's it, always not hot enough. Hot, hot tub's not hot enough. That's right. Absolutely. It's what the Buddhists call the hungry ghost, mm-hmm. right? Ooh. Thin neck, big belly. Nothing gets in. So that's okay. We can make peace with that. But when we say the ego can never uh, be happy or at mm. peace, except for brief moments, when you get what you want, this is Rupert Spira. When you get what you want, so uh, you get a new show or whatever. Well, I don't know what you want. You get yeah. a new special. Yeah. The reason you're happy, this is what Rupert says, and I believe him. Is is not the thing, because you also know your special having your special that'll fade, you know it, it, that that feeling isn't consistent. You can't always remember you have a special and feel happy. That network will literally disappear in the next six yeah, months. If, if, if enough people <laughs> if enough people don't watch this, they're going to yank it in a year. This is a lease. <laughs> yeah, it's I, true. Oh yeah, no, I did so same I same same. I can't bank on that. The reason you feel happy when you get something isn't the thing. It's because in that moment, your ego finally got what it wanted. So there's the cessation of desire. You no longer are resisting reality, which is something you can do all the time. Mm. But when you stop resisting, so they say this, the great way, the Tao, isn't difficult for those who have no preferences. Right? So in that moment, you get the thing. And it's not the thing. It's that the, the monkey mind that's always next, 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 Mars, Mars, Mars finally calms down and you, not your ego, but you as awareness are revealed. And the quality of what you really are, your consciousness, isn't 
can't be happy or unhappy. It's made of a feeling you might call happy. It's made of a feeling you might call fulfilled or peaceful or boundless mm -hmm. or infinite. I like that you say spacious. Yeah, spacious is a great word. What does it mean? Well, not clinging. Yeah. Right? Even to a good feeling. So I like talking about this because even as we're saying it, I could postpone my happiness. I'm not even talking about Pete's happiness. I'm talking about the happiness that I am, that aware field within which everything appears. Right now, you're a phenomenon in that awareness. The field itself, you can say, is it okay? Does it need this podcast to go well? Or will it be fine either way? Mm -hmm. The real who you are. Because making Pete happy is sort of a bitch. That's why I'm dunking in cold water and <laughs> chasing specials and stuff. That's fine. It's not like I don't do that. Mm. But when I was driving here, I was listening to Yacht Rock and just kind <laughs> of tripping out on what, what is hearing my voice right now. Mm. Awareness. How do you know your experience? Mm. There's something in you that is aware. If you ask yourself, this is Rupert Spira. Please look him up. He's incredible. Paraphrasing. But anybody can do this. You don't have to be a woo-woo hippie. You can just say, am I aware? And then look, check. Say, am I aware? And you find. Mm. But it's not an object. Mm. It's not a place. Mm. There's no shape or color to it. It's just, it's this thing. And the more, not as a thought experiment, that you identify as that awareness, uh, the more you rest in your nature, which is spacious, blissful peace. And that is, I achieve that more and more throughout the day. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have horrible moments. Uh, yesterday I was a total bitch. I was fasting. So you, you, you take, take food away from me, I, it's harder to do. <laughs> right, but you feel like that pays off in the long run? But I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. But more and more. I'm good. <laughs> Do you mind if we don't? <laughs> Dude, I don't want to talk about it. I'm on a fast from talking, hearing about yeah, that from about high fasting. performers. Yeah, fuck off. Strong boundary. No, I got it. I just it. love that men have eating Strong disorders boundary. now. Isn't it fun? <laughs> I'm like, I starved myself my entire teens and 20s. No, I, I, yeah, it worked. Now I want to defend now it. I, now you've got me defensive. I, I, no, no, no. I, but I don't have to. I've had David Sinclair on. I've had, we've, I'm, go for it. Drop. Knock yourself out. It's a, it, we, I don't even want people to do it. Okay. It works for me. Okay. But not not just because I starved myself, but because it changed my relationship to food. But that's oh, all, that's wonderful. All I oh, that's genius. I don't binge. And then the bitch of it is, it's <laughs> like they teach you karate, but they also teach you the discipline to not use it. Yep, that's which it. sucks. So I fast and I'm like, tomorrow I'm going to eat a fucking piece. But then you're clean and you wake up and you're like, why you would I want to ruin this good feeling? It's really just doing the hard thing. It's like, another thing. It's, it's another it's cold, cold plunge. plunge. Same thing. But Rich Roll said that to me. He was like, watch out because that can be another addiction. You fast for one day, why not two? And I'm like, I, I don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait yeah, to that, I'm good. That seems, sounds like you think, Rich. Yeah, I'm going to eat you. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Rich. We're taking a quick break from the great Pete Holmes to talk about merch. When I started podcasting, an online store was literally the furthest thing from my mind. Now I sell my book right behind me. Look at it. It's flying like hotcakes. Uh, <laughs> I sell my book because it is so easy, all because I use Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify will help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify will help you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort. Thanks to Shopify magic, your AI powered all-star. So I had a, a breakthrough with Shopify when I found the tab where you can find out who bought what you sold and where they're from. So what I did, business brain over here, is I catered my next tour based on where the most sales were happening. So Chicago, Dallas, Austin, Denver, St. Louis, y'all were the cities who bought my book the mostest. So I figured, why not use the data I got from Shopify to go to the cities where you guys like me, you really like me, so I can come sign your books if you haven't already sold them at a yard sale or re-gifted it to someone at work, which by the way, do not do that. You will be called into HR and immediately get fired. My book is considered an unwanted advance. Shopify, I love you. 
know that Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Whoa. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because business is businesses that grow. They grow with Shopify. You know what, Shopify? You can clip that if you want and use it as your main ad. I'm just I'd like to just publicly give you permission to use that is your is your you don't even have to pay me. You just, can replace the cha-ching. You could replace the cha-ching that you have patented that is your signature with whatever I just did. I'm not reading it again, Pat. Keep going. I said what I said. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period and sh- <laughs> does Shopify spell <laughs> I wanted to say, does Shopify sell speech therapists? <laughs> ah, sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Whitney, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash Whitney now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash Whitney. cha cha Okay, so what I was saying, the end. Yeah, that was the end. But like, oh, I was saying it's not just a belief that you are awareness. It's not just fun. If you believe your awareness, you can be in my group and we can get together and talk about and sing songs to awareness and tell people we celebrate awareness holidays. And when I die, you can give me an awareness eulogy. It's not even about that. It's about right now when I remember that I am that which is aware of my experience. The clouds lift and I remember myself and myself is made of peace. That's the peace that passeth Let's use mm. the king's pass at the understanding. That's the peace beyond understanding. Because circumstantial happiness and circumstantial peace is a fucking bitch game. Mm. It's stupid. And who knows better than us? Mm. We're affirmation junkies going out. Mm. That was a gift for me. I actually, I went so far into it. I was like, oh, this isn't working. That's, that's a gift. Mm. That's, that's the master class. The amount that you have, um, the level of clarity you've achieved, the amount of work you've done. I hate when people say that shit. Like you've done a lot of work, whatever. I'm just trying to get to the question of- the, What if you're like, what's wrong with you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Can you say that again a different way? Um, uh, one more time, hmm. come again. No, is just the plant medicine, the all the work you've done yourself. Is there a level of consciousness you don't recommend getting to? <laughs> well, yeah, no, Pete. Doesn't recommend any of it. Okay. Because it's the it's the end of Pete. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I'm just. So look. Because yeah. I've never done MDMA. I, I've there's a, a bufo and the frog and the and I see people that are. I'm like, do I? I remember. I don't know. This was maybe like five years ago. This is going to sound self-aggrandizing or like bragging. Um, I went in to do some love addiction work, and then I was you know hardcore in my out, and I'm doing EMDR and I'm all this stuff and. My therapist did say something to me and she was like, um, just be careful how much work you do just so you know there's going to be less and less people you can date. It gets lonelier and lonelier. Oh, I actually really agree with that. I, and she's two- going to say you're going to lose a lot of friends yeah. when you get healthy, the sick get angry. And so it's just- That's a good one. You really have to prepare for how lonely this might get. I love Jay-Z. They, they, he says, my friends say you've changed. I'm like, you think I did all that work to stay the same? Same. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, that's great. You know, so so I just am curious, like, is there a level of consciousness that you don't wish on your worst enemy? <laughs> no, well, look, the reason I said Pete doesn't like any of it is because Pete doesn't get to come. The mm. reason why psychedelics sound like a bad idea to Whitney is because it is a bad idea for Whitney. <laughs> it's a great idea for you. Oh, because she has to go away. Yes. She gets... I've smoked 5-MeO uh, DMT. That's the toad. Pete didn't go. <laughs> you think Pete got to sit at the right hand of God? <laughs> Just say, hey, oh, what's this lever Is do? this thing on? Yeah. You hey, where are you go. from? If your ego comes, oh, this is a Ramdas thing, it's in Be Here Now. If your ego comes with you into those places, that's psychosis. That's what psychosis is. Yeah. If, you th- if Pete thinks he's Jesus, he's in a loony bin. If my awareness thinks it's the same awareness that everyone shares, oh. that's that's a different, but then you're just talking about it. You, un- you understand the difference? Yes. But we have to get over, what we need to tell ourselves over and over on this, on this journey, or I have to tell myself over and over, is like, you're innocent, mm. there's nothing to do, Yeah. you're already there, 
All we need to do if you want to experience that is remove the impediments. And that, that is where we kind of clean up. You got to clean up before you wake up. And I'm all for that. So but it's right. It's right here. It's, it's right. It's right here. T- so more on your morning, you wake up yeah. and you, is this there- is a good morning. I do go through phases where I stagnate and I, I kind of don't do anything, but in a great morning, I get up before my wife and daughter mm-hmm. and I'm in the cold plunge. They, there's neuroscience to this that like doing the thing, I don't know what the chemical is or the hormone is, mm-hmm. but they say doing things you don't want to do is easier in the morning. So do mm-hmm. them in the morning if it's exercise or whatever. So I get up and I get in the cold plunge while I'm still hot from bed. You have music, you have uh, When I'm in there? Yeah. No, when I get out of the cold plunge, I do a big like sun salutation with my feet on the ground. Okay. Like an earthing kind of thing. Okay. And that's where I repeat, I repeat certain things to myself. They're, they would sound crazy to you. One of them is forgiveness offers everything I want. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a little- It's also like R-E, Pete. R-E. Like repeat, it's just R, like email R E. Re. Pete. <laughs> Not sure I follow this riff. It's like you regarding gotta, Pete. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. You think, oh, you think it's okay, is what you're no, saying? No, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not okay. My tism just came out a little. Like, regard, you know how an email would be like, yeah. Ray. Repeat. Yeah. It's your name's in it. That's all. <laughs> Like I just, it just was a little poignant there for me. I loved it, and I everyone it. repeats stuff, but for you especially, oh, it was, I see. It was yeah, like named after you. It yeah. was like named after you. There's just a lot of ways. I to said take this to it. someone the other day. Someone said something about Silicon Valley, like criminals, and I was like, "Does anyone else think it's weird that it's literally Silicon is the name?" Yeah, and it bombed. It was just a conversation with. Oh, Silicon. I had an opener where I'd go, uh, "My name is Pete. Some of you may recognize me." Some of you might be cognizing me for the first time. That joke <laughs> is ungettable. Recognizing. So I'm way on the spectrum with that you. That feels like great written. It's like, that's a great yeah, written. Yeah, yeah. Some things are good written. It. But I kind of was like, if you're going to be a bunch of con artists that make silly shit. Yeah, silly cons. Don't call it silly con. It's don't right there the, in the name. Don't call the airport a terminal. I All like. Right. <laughs> Don't call the gate C4. Obsessed. While we're at it. Your, your Obsessed. gate is C4. I'm like, what? I can't say bomb, but you can name a gate after one? <laughs> That's, That's wild. Insane. Wild. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. Um, cesarean section. C-section. Right. Caesar was stabbed to death. Oh, wow. It's a cesarean. I'm not sure if that's why, but it's a little like. like... rhinoplasty. Rhino. <laughs> Your nose They're is They're aware they have a problem. That's a Seinfeld bit. Oh, God. These women are aware they have a problem. <laughs> Do we have to bring rhinos into it? <laughs> it's because rhino means nose. That's where you ruin it. You just are like, you would look like a rhino. We need to get yeah, this yeah. solved. Well, the his tags were, we're going to perform a cue ball <laughs> And this will cure your chromdomia. <laughs> These are medical that's terms. Right. <laughs> of course. What a great comment. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Then you repeat that many times. Yes, yeah, some affirmations. I believe in that. I just think what you, you know how when you eat, uh, if you eat a cupcake for breakfast, you'll crave sugar all day. I think if you start your day mm. with a bad thought, you'll kind of be, so, some, sometimes, sure. I wouldn't say I'm rough on myself. I'm not rough on myself. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty accommodating. Yeah. <laughs> but if I ha- if I catch myself just sort of Seeing with comic eyes, everything's, Mm -hmm. I'm comparing everything, I'm contrasting everything, making jokes about everything. I just go like, can you just stop? Yeah, just stop. Or it's like once you've taken two bites of the cupcake, you're like, well, I might as well eat the whole thing. I had two Fig Newtons, I might as well eat the whole sleeve. Sleeve. Right, Brian Regan, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Always (laughs) think about you whenever I talk about food. Um, And... I've started, and this is, I don't know if I recommend this to anyone because I'm kind of back to going to some more rudimentary things. Um, Abraham Hicks has this morning meditation. I don't know how people feel about her. I don't know if she's like the, you know, Walmart of I think you're self-help. I don't know. But she does like this morning meditation. It's like 20 minutes long. I've just been listening to it every morning. And it's yeah. like today will be the day of mo- of my most gratitude. Like it's yeah. just kind yeah. of like a positive thing. Half of it makes sense. Half of it's kind of drivelly, but it just starts me on the right path. It's like taking a vitamin in the morning, whether it works or not. I took it. Well, you just reminded me that this is in my, uh, it doesn't matter. It's in my book. Who cares? Buy my book. (laughs) (laughs) Mine are behind me, whatever. Yeah, Yours are there. Uh, but I comedy sex got after I get out of the, um, hot, 
I feel real good, but then I jump in the pool and the pool's real cold. Then I take a bath in my golden coins. Like, what is this <laughs> life? Jesus. Cartoon then I tell my villain. father to give me some privacy. I know, my God. <laughs> the royal penis is clean, your highness. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Then I, I snort the adrenochrome. Whitney, <laughs> what? I'm going to take one of these cameras around your house if you don't stop this riff. <laughs> my, your house is insane. So any who's old. Um, I, I put my arms up and I look at this big, beautiful uh, tree that no one else could afford this tree. <laughs> I hate you. And I say, yes, thank you. That is a big, but that's what I'm saying. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. Mm. So the way to be, some people are listening to this in traffic and that is a great practice. Don't postpone your happiness till when you get there. You mm. can't get there. You're if I being, just get this thing, I'll be happy though. It doesn't work because mm. when you get there, this is Ramda. You eat the ice cream, then you want water, then mm -hmm. you have to pee, then you're bored, you watch TV. And I feel bad tired. I ate the ice cream. Yeah, that you can add that level to it. It's a whole other trip. But then you have to go to bed. Now you woke up and now you have to work. Now you need money. It's like it never stops. So like the whole thing, it's like life is what happens when you're busy making plans or mm -hmm. whatever. It's like at a certain point you realize that these, these slowdowns or these impediments are actually really great opportunities to kind of just go like, Yes, thank you. And when you're sad, I have a friend going through a hard thing. And I was like, look, I don't want to, I'd rather feel it than fix it. Like, I'm just here with you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the conversation, I was like, yes, thank you. Your nervous system does not know what to do with yes, thank you. Yeah. I, I had a. Um, so just to clarify, you, there were two mantras that you mentioned, resist nothing and yes, thank you. The first one was forgiveness offers everything I want. Oh, sorry. I have, no, okay. I don't know why I have, maybe you said this somewhere else. Forgiveness offers everything I want. Yeah. I love that. That's a hard one. And it always helps me to remember uh, we forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because we deserve peace. Yeah. Forgiveness Eugene, always. Poison hoping they die. Always selfish. Yeah. It's also, it's a misunderstanding of who everybody is. Mm -hmm. And it's very lonely. And and it's very. I, I spent a lot of time forgiving people that never harmed me in the first place. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm totally with you. And the thing, this is from A Course in Miracles, but it's like. If you want to experience forgiveness, you have to practice by forgiving everybody. Mm. Because by holding grudges and, and hating and judging, it's it's just a mirror. The mm -hmm. whole thing's a That's mirror. Right. So you forgive them, not even just for you, but for the whole thing. Mm. The whole thing is forgiving itself when you forgive somebody. There's this uh, uh, step in 12 steps where you... You apologize to people, you make an amends if you know where it's due, and then you do it every night just to kind of clear your consciousness, make an amends. Um, and uh, and I remember when I first went into program, uh, my sponsor said to me, everyone that you think owes you an apology is who you owe an apology to. I like that. Just as like a little, and you're like, what do you mean? This person did this to me and this yeah. to me. And then I turned around and went like, oh yeah, I had unreasonable expectations. Oh yeah, yeah I was trying to control you. Oh yeah, I was like, yeah. I was passive aggressive and I was trying to change you and fix you. Like, yeah. That's right. That reminds me, another great teacher that changed my life is Byron Katie, who wrote a book called Loving What Is, mm. which is the title. You know, it's a good when even the title is just yeah, like, yeah. oh, that paid out. Yeah. But, you know, you do something called the work and it, it, real quick. You could say something like, my mom doesn't understand me. Mm. That's what we, the first step is to find the, the language of the pain. Really say it. In fact, write it down. You have mm -hmm. to write it down and you have to let it talk honestly. And you say, my, this isn't even that good because usually they're more embarrassing, but my mom okay. doesn't understand me. And then you ask these four questions. You say, is it true? And you go, yeah, yeah, she doesn't understand me. Can you really know it's true? Can I do one? Yeah, sure. Um, You're already on board. What if the third step is like, show your butthole? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's go. God, God forbid I be an OnlyFans billionaire. Um, A butt billionaire. What if, what if, okay, the guy I'm dating, um, uh, it, it has to be like they've wronged me. It doesn't appreciate, takes me for granted. Okay. So Is that a good one? Sure. Yeah. That's a great one. Okay. Uh, You're like, and it's true. Yeah. Uh, so let's call him Bill. Bill Burr, your okay. boyfriend. Yep. Shipped. Okay. Uh, Bill Burr, Nia, your the boyfriend. only person whose shit list I don't want to be on is his wife. Okay. Yeah. True. Uh, okay. We'll say uh, Mark. Okay. Mark takes me for granted. Um, I, I would say. Mark should appreciate me more. Okay, that might better. be helpful. Okay. Um, is it true? Not necessarily. Because it's not happening, right? 
What do you mean? It, it's not, he appreciates you as much as he is. So it, it, to say he should is sort of arguing with reality. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I have get it. You're like, you're like shaking your fist going, you should, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't appreciate you more. He appreciates you exactly as much as he appreciates you. <laughs> it's already fun. But I. <laughs> and you're going, you should appreciate me more. He doesn't. I do. But the irony is that I identify as an insecure person sometimes. But now I'm like, this person doesn't appreciate how I'm all of a sudden. Yeah. I have a very high uh, self-worth. Yeah. Which is fine. I'm not even. I know, that. but it's just a weird thing that I've already noticed. But the second step of like. Can you know that the second question is, can you know for let's say you do say, yes, it's true. He should appreciate me. OK, can you absolutely know for sure that it's true? And then this is where we get kind of interesting. And then you, I, it, yeah. sorry, you've already made me realize my definition for being appreciated is like more texts. Right. I don't. Well, that's another thought we can look at. Mark should know. Mark should appreciate me in the way that I appreciate other people like Mark should. Or the next one, everyone should appreciate people the same way. Or there my, is a there no, is a right way, way to appreciate my people. way. And by the yeah. way, only person I've ever dated who has explicitly sent a text saying I appreciate you. That's so funny. The only one. So then it was like, yeah, well, it's just us, Whitney. You know what I mean? There's right. only there's only one of it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can you know? But then the interesting area for me is we don't know how much he appreciates you. Right. We know that he doesn't text you, but we don't really know that he doesn't appreciate you. Uh -uh. You know what I mean? Because do people always tell you how they feel? Are, do people even know how they feel? It's very murky in there. Mm -hmm. We go around acting like it's very cut and dry. Yeah, but like, yeah. my dad is a purple tornado of confusing emotions. Mm -hmm. And I go, he doesn't, well, I don't know. It's all in there. He's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so the third one is, uh, how do you feel when you believe Mark should appreciate me more? I this one's easy. Just how do you feel? Yeah, I feel um, sad yeah. and insecure and... I beat myself up because I'm going, oh, I'm recreating childhood circumstance. Yeah. You, so you feel guilty. A little you guilty. Feel ashamed. Embarrassed. Embarrassed. You probably feel angry. Not enough. Unloved. Worthless. Yeah. Isolated. Um, alone. Scared. Okay. I'm just saying like, And by look, the way, if we're going to really it. go, yeah. like not pretty enough. Am I getting yeah, older? Ugly. Mortal. Mm -hmm. It's all Not there. interesting. Oh my God. Yes. I would say- Almost any feeling has pretty much every feeling, mm -hmm. but let's let, let's look at it. Mm -hmm. All of that. Then the next one is, how would you feel if you didn't believe it? If you didn't believe it, I'd anymore. find someone else to believe it with. That's fine, but how would you feel if you believe that he appreciated you? In my head, I'd feel amazing, and all my problems would be solved. Yeah, you'd feel appreciated. You'd feel loved. You'd feel safe. Seen, you'd feel seen, seen. Because I valid, loved. respected, valid. Mm -hmm. spacious, understood, clear. Happy, carefree, carefree, light, free. Yeah, we've already shown that it, we don't know it's true, and and there's two ways to feel, mm -hmm. and you're choosing the shitty one. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is like exposure therapy. Yeah. Then the last one, this one, I don't know how it'll work because it's different for everybody. But you do the turnaround, which is there's lots of turnarounds here. Mark does appreciate me. What's four ways that's true? One is he texts me, I appreciate you. So we already have one. What are yeah. three more? You could do that. Yeah. And you find them. Mm -hmm. My dad does understand me. My dad knows this, this joke about it. He, my dad said that to me. He, yeah. he remembers me. And how often, I, I don't think I've ever said to someone, I just want you to know I appreciate you. Yeah. Like well, I, everyone could have that story about me as well. That's what I'm saying is we're making our own reality. I, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to show this person how much I appreciate them because when Christmas rolls around, I'm going to get them a gift. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not doing words of affirmation with them at all. I'm all yeah. of a sudden expecting some words of affirmation. Yeah, you're expecting... I well, don't that, give that. That's the next turnaround is I should appreciate Mark more. It's fun. I should understand it's my dad more. I don't understand my dad. It's like when you point one finger at someone else, you point three at yourself. Yeah. It's kind of just whatever I'm accusing someone of doing is probably what I'm that's doing. That's the turnaround. Because I, I, I thought of that. But they all have other beliefs. The, the skill of the work, and this is Byron Katie, the work. It's all her. And it's incredible. Uh, she, all of her books are incredible. But you start getting better at identifying what is the the baby and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean, what does the hurt actually mm -hmm. say? Does it help you to say inner child? Absolutely. Yeah. To be like, my, I'm having an inner child reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Put my hand on my chest and mm -hmm. say, I got you. Yeah. It's powerful stuff. Am I allowed to ask you if I were, so a lot of people have religious trauma. Fine. A lot of people saw hypocrisy. Fine. I, you mean reli religious? Just, oh, oh, no. Oh, hypocrisy. Sorry. I thought you meant the movie. Oh, no. Sorry. I just mean. I think a lot of people's yeah, hang-ups on religious. I, you you brought it up in, in I believe your special about how um, 
are in our business, there being so much atheism. Mm. And I just to add to that, like, oh, you don't believe in God, but you do believe in like astrology. Let's just calm down with the <laughs> <laughs> with the atheism, you guys. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm seeing all these other little kind of religions pop up, whether it's keto and I don't know. Yeah, it, I know what you mean. Wellness, you know, crystals, whatever. Everyone's fine. Well, QAnon, yeah. you know, whatever it is. We all, you know, terror management theory, you know, we all have to have something. I'm just curious as someone who is like now kind of going like, all right, I'm in the market for a, a religion. I identify in many ways the way you do religious wise. But after you've seen a lot of death, there's this craving for like and plan a funeral, like the way Jewish people run a funeral. You're just like, yeah. after you've had to handle a funeral, there's no, they just have it down. You're like, yeah. I want some, God, good orderly direction. That's what we say in program. So mm -hmm. I always, you know, I say higher power. I say God, cause I'm in this program. If someone were to start back up with the Bible per se, like where would they, where would you recommend someone start who wants to get back on the wagon? Well, okay. I'll, I, I love this question. And I can't wait to answer it. I do want to say that there are different levels. And one of them that we're talking about is uh, tribal identity. And that sounds like a nasty no-no. I don't mean it that way. Uh, a, a clan, a tribe is one of the things that you get from religion. In fact, it's Reza Aslan did my podcast. And mm. it was like 90% of religion is to have a cultural and a tribal identity. Yep. And that's fine. Uh, I'm not putting that down. For me, at a certain point, that didn't cut the mustard, and that's mm. okay. I don't go to church. Uh, that's fine. My 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 snooty. I want to be like you, the point is to never leave church. You're supposed to maintain that connection. Mm. But anyway, I understand the covered dish and the and the funerals and the weddings. Mm -hmm. And also, it's like that's, I get to be it. against religion is so elitist. Also, it's like it's also like ch free childcare on Sundays. Yeah, that's and fair. It's like there's a lot of reasons people go. And Community. life is really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I completely get that. Here's here's I love your question though. I think that the Bible can be summarized perfectly uh, with two stories. It's the Garden of Eden and the Prodigal Son, and I think that's pretty much all you need. Mm. Uh, the Garden of Eden, but I would change it a little bit. Not change it, but you'll see. The Garden of Eden is we were in perfect oneness, uh, one with God, naked. So not literally naked, but we were unclothed, mm. unnamed, just pure being and one with God. In the garden with God. So that's what in the garden with God. Does that make sense? Yes. You're tracking with me? I, <laughs> why am I glazing over? <laughs> no, I just see you uh, wincing in a way that's usually reserved for eating spicy mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Ah! I'm... Well, I'll say what I, I'll say and then and then you can ask. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions. Okay. Imagine that there's a place, you could call it heaven, that is perfect oneness. It's, mm. There's no separation. So you are with God. Mm. And the way we discuss that, or the way that we metaphorize that, is a garden and naked. Then what do we do? We eat from the tree of good and evil. Mm -hmm. That's duality. Right. So yes and no. That's the Listen, world we're in. I, my brain was going, and I'm sorry that I glazed over. I kind of was going, oh, was Eve a, a conniving bitch in this one? Like, did I just take that away? Is uh, that no, unnecessary? There's a little, there's a little uh, I could see how it could be interpreted misogynistic. I, I have no tie to this story. So Me either. I don't. Meaning I don't have any need to defend it. So yeah, yeah. I could see. How and you, I, I don't. I, my she's brain. She's not a conniving bitch. She just listens to the snake. My brain. Dumb. Dumb bitch. A dumb she's bitch. a dumb bitch. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I just, but Adam's a dumb bitch too. Know. He's like, what do you eat? Oh, <laughs> I know. I mean, like, yeah. Every time any story, people are like, sitcoms are so sexist against women. That all I'm like, look at the men in sitcoms. They're literally yeah. functionally, yeah. I'm not allowed to say the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, everything is so sexist. Yeah. It's fine. Calm no, it's down. true. That's a Brian Regan bit. The guy's stuck in the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, isn't he great? One of the best. That's so good. Anyway, there. Look, don't, don't, don't start went pulling threads on the Garden I'm not, of Eden. My story. brain. I'm just meaning like, you could talk about the Garden of Eden for thousands of years. In fact, we have. Yes. Here's what I'm gonna say. We were in the garden. We were one with God. There was a snake. The snake is our ego. It's not the devil. Mm. The snake represents come into the world. Come into this world. Mm -hmm. No good and evil. No yes and no. Don't be nothing. Mm -hmm. Be, have pain and pleasure. Have winning and losing. Come into duality, the tree of good and evil. So 
We hate it. What I like about that is we elected to do it. Mm. We wanted to do it. We wanted to play this game. We wanted to dance this dance. Uh, we ate it and we got booted from the garden. The part that I would change is uh, the part that I think the ego wrote from this story is then God is mad. God puts up angels mm -hmm. with flaming swords to block us from the garden and kicks us out and says, now childbirth is going to be hard. Now you won't live forever and you'll die. All mm. this stuff. It's like a punishment. Mm. That is what I would call the ego God. That's the God that we made in our image instead of the other way around. So I dropped that part. But what I like about that story is that we were one. Mm -hmm. We elected to eat an apple to experience duality, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Pat's fucking over there. You're over <laughs> there. This is duality. Okay. But we exist. But we know it all. My daughter, I watch my daughter. You're, you're going to watch your baby. They'll be upset sometimes. They'll skin their knee. You know what I mean? This is duality. But you'll also know chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. and chocolate. So this is the game we're playing. Yeah, it's okay. Contrast. It's a it. sacrifice that oneness made. Like a mother, this is Rupert Spira as well, sacrifices parts of her body and her life to- What? To experience, to let What this, do you mean? I mean, you're going to split from- I'm going to tear? From anus <laughs> If to, I tear, I swear to God. To pudendum. <laughs> Am I? No, my wife didn't. Okay. You'll be fine. You got a huge cougar. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear the doctor go, it's coming out. She's got a huge I cougar. Hate your gut. <laughs> I hate your gut. <laughs> I'm literally like thinking of starting drinking just to keep the baby small. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, okay. The second story. So what I remember, the, the point is we were one, we chose, we made a sacrifice to eat the apple to enter into this sort of dance, mm -hmm. this experiment, this play. The other story, which I always say this, but I'll say it a million times. I don't I care. Uh, of all the things that Jesus definitely said, scholars would agree that the prodigal son is Jesus's closer. Right. <laughs> it's like the big number. Yeah. I think that's the whole thing. Uh, there's a son. He says, give me my inheritance. So God gives him his, uh, the dad, God, gives him his inheritance. Mm -hmm. and then he goes out and squanders it. That's what we're doing. Fucking up there telling dick jokes and rolling yeah. around with the pigs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're just having a good old time. Yeah. Then what happens? The money runs out. Your life runs out. The money is his life, basically. He runs out of money. He's destitute. He's working with the pigs and he's a Jew, remember? So working with the pigs is like, Jesus is trying to say he's lower than low. Mm. You know what I mean? And he goes in his lowest moment, he remembers his father, but he doesn't go, which he should. My father's a king. I'll go home. He'll welcome me back. He doesn't because he's afraid of his dad. He's like, he's going to see that I squandered my inheritance, my life. Hmm. So he goes, maybe if I go back and like throw myself before him, he'll maybe make me a servant in his kingdom. And at least I won't die. So he goes back scared to face his father. But we know the story. Father isn't mad. In fact, I would summarize both of these stories as dad's not mad. That's what we need to- Now you tell me. We need to know. Dad's not mad. He gives him a robe. He puts rings on his fingers. He washes his feet, gives him new shoes, gives him a, the best room in the palace. They slaughter the fattened calf, all the Bible stuff, meaning they had a rip in good time and celebrated him. That's the whole thing. We're afraid of God. We're afraid. We think we're with the pigs. We think we're shit. We think we've squandered our inheritance. We think we got kicked out of the garden. When we, what we really need to realize is dad's not mad. It's safe to go home. In fact, you're already home. There's just kind of a movie playing. <laughs> so Richard Rohr, to summarize, said the, the point of spirituality or, or mysticism or faith or whatever you want to say is to accept that you are accepted. And this is my brain. I go, well, what did that dad do when he was a child to make him think what? <laughs> he wasn't going to accept him later? Like, what number did he do on his self-esteem? That's because fair. It, no, I'm just, it is because I <laughs> See, go. You'd be a good Jewish woman. <laughs> you'd do the good. This is what they do. Like, they they ask the stories. I know the this is a New Testament story. dad is acting story. in a way that seems pretty guilty. He seems like he's overcompensating. But, no. but Jesus tells stories about this over and over about the irrational love of God. None of these get reported. Mm -hmm. One, there's a great story about, uh, uh, there's always a wealthy person in the story that they represent God. Uh, uh, interesting. Or, and he hires See, three. See, no one tells you this when no, you're No, I know. They just school. tell you that your vagina is evil and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So this guy, uh, it's one of my favorite parables. He hires three workers uh, to work in his fields. The first guy shows up at 8 a.m. I'm paraphrasing. Works all day. I won't know. Works from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The second guy shows up 
at 12, works from 12 to 8. The last guy shows up at 6. He works from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Guy pays them all the same. And of course, the guy that showed up at 8 Hollywood. is mad. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. The point of the story is you can't divide infinity. God loves you. Water makes you wet. You'd like to play this little, I was going to say bitch, it's going to ruin the clip for the religious folks, <laughs> but you want to play this little bitch game of earning it. Oh, God loves you when you're good. You mean like your boss at Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. Have a God that's better than the boss at Cheesecake Factory who loves you when you're good and hates you when you're bad. Kick rocks. But like, that's what church did to get you to pay them, yeah, I, right? Yeah, for sure. It was, it, it, that was the, when to... the business of religion came in. I, and I get it. And there was certain social order and different motivation. I'm not- Controls people. I'm not- It's like what we do with Santa and kids. I'm just trying to understand that, not totally vilify it. But yeah, you you create a need. Your soul is dirty and it's going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. You create a time. You put a clock on it. Mm. Tickets, tickets to Whitney's tour is only on sale on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Use code- What what'd I say? <laughs> Cooter. <laughs> Use code oh, giant Cooter. No. But you create urgency. Right? You're going to die. Mm -hmm. And then you provide a solution. Believe in Jesus. Come with us. That's marketing. And that's okay. Yeah. I'm not even I'm not even doing new rule. I'm yeah, not yeah. trying to do that. Yeah, I'm just sure. saying like, that's what human beings do. The great, the great little joke, God and the devil are walking. God uh, picks up a stone and he goes, oh, it's truth. And the devil says, let me organize that for you. It's what we do. Yeah. We ruin it. Mm -hmm. But the two, I, I feel like you didn't, maybe you didn't hear me. I'm not sure. The whole point is to accept that you are accepted. That's the whole thing. Dad's not mad. And it starts with you not being mad at you. Forgiving. You want to be forgiven, forgive. You want to be loved, love. You want to be free, make others free. Mm. It's in The Course in Miracles. A jailer's not free with his prisoner because mm. you have to watch them. Right. So I love what? that. Guess what, dipshit? You're in jail too. Mm. You're just on the other side of the bars. Let it all go. Mm. But guess what? You already did. Mm. It's just you... We drag the past into this pristine. Look at how fresh, look at how fresh this moment is. Look at how wide open it is. It's I'm nuts. so in on this cult, dude. <laughs> I'm There's so no cult. You're gonna be so disappointed. In. We don't sell anything. If you, you know, you're just the remix of all the best shit in if one you place. You like it. I really, because I quote him so much, Richard Rohr. Uh, Rupert Spira, S-P-I-R-A. He wrote a book called Being Aware of Being Aware that will change your life. But you're remixing all the best shit into and one then, place. And then there's me, yeah. What I like about spirituality is it's not like comics. They don't get mad if you say their stuff. Yeah, I try yeah. to footnote them. But I couldn't just do Eddie Murphy's jokes and say, that was Eddie Murphy. Like That's, <laughs> that's, that's cheating. But in spirituality, everybody kind of borrows. Because it... We're, we're, at least I, that's my understanding. Maybe I get a cease and desist from Rupert Spira. I don't know. But that would be very disappointing. But I'm just trying to get out what's helped me. Yeah. But you know, can, can you want to do the Rupert Spira thing? Yes. Close your eyes. Without This is Rupert. I can't do it like he can. But I'm, And I'm not even doing it as a party trick. I'm doing it as something you can do for yourself. Okay. And that I do for myself. Close your eyes. Pat, you do it too, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tighten my cooter. Close that <laughs> eye. Without reference to the past, okay? You're a newborn baby. You're a newborn baby. You, you, you have no past. So without referencing the past, tell me about yourself. I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? That's with your eyes closed with no... Oh. Past or knowing about your body. Oh, got it. Okay. I'm How sure. would you know you're pregnant? I mean, that's a good point. You just showed up. So we're looking for the self that would be aware of the feeling of a baby in your belly. And even that, you're adding the story of a feeling of a baby in your it's belly. True. It's just a sensation. Tell me about you, the field within which any of those sensations would appear. I feel like I'm bombing. That's hilarious. Because, <laughs> Whitney, I'll just help you because I can't see you, Bomb. You can't really talk about There's it. There's nothing to... You can just say, I am. Or so I am So it aware. shows you how attached to your stories you are. You are. And it, it's really trying to point you to your true self. The other one, and I don't want to freak you out because I did this with Craig Ferguson and, and it freaked him out. But put your hand on the table and close your eyes. Where does the sensation of your hand on the table appear? Where are you experiencing it? Just, you could just, it, no, it's not a trick. Here, right? It's here. 
It's keep your eyes closed. I oh, sorry. I, I don't. I don't like looking at you. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, look. It appears as a sensation. You might visualize it as little dots, right, that show up in this open, spacious field. There's a sensation that shows up, and if I say, "Where is that showing up?" You would just say, "If you were a baby with no spatial reference." I'm like a yeah, floaty kind of. You'd be like, "It's it shows up here. It shows up in yourself, right?" You understand that? Yes. It shows up in yourself. Now picture Michael Jordan. Okay. Where is that? Is he playing baseball or basketball? Baseball, of course. Okay. <laughs> so Michael Jordan playing baseball, that where does that image appear? It appears here hmm. in the same field that the sensation of your hand appears. Now, my voice where is that coming together for you? Where does that get processed and known? Oh, no. Here. Here's, here's, if it's starting to make you anxious, here, open it's, your eyes. It's not making me anxious. It's just making me realize how much, I think like when you have like epiphanies like this and get clear like this, you have to accept how much time you've wasted doing no. shit other ways. Guess what? Time doesn't exist. <laughs> but all those mistakes, I, no when mistake. you're just like, ugh, I've been so unconscious for so long. No, 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 no. This is the best. I love that you're not anxious. I got a little worried that sometimes people get a little spooked. But to be afraid of what you are is 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 wildly insane. And what you are is is that field within which my voice, the feeling of your hand on the table, the image that you imagine, the thought, the thought. How, has this episode gone too long? When should we wrap it up? All of that is showing up in a spacious, pristine, boundaryless. Here's the other one. Got mm. this from Muji. Can you find a boundary in this field on the other side of which it is not? Can you find like a wall and then on the other side it, it's not there? Uh, wait, I'm, 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 no, no, it's okay. Maybe I'm not being clear. No, no, no. If if there, so I'm, I'm picturing a wall and then no, the no, other no. Side. Don't picture anything. Okay. So this field, within which the feeling of your hand on the table mm -hmm. and my voice and all this stuff is appearing. So you can we can agree that to use spatial, it's it's it feels like a space. It feels mm -hmm. like an empty field that is aware. Yes. So it's a, it, it's a field of awareness. Is there any boundary? Does it end? Do you ever no. go, if you send something out into it, do you ever hit a wall and go, oh, this is the end of it? I'm a flat earther, so this is perfect. Thank you, Kyrie. That, so we can say that it is without boundary. Yes. Also, uh, and I got this from Fred Davis, think of a memory from your childhood, this sense of being. Now think of you're a little girl, you're going swimming. In that memory, was this sense of being there? And was it different? Does it age? Mm. Does it change? Does it need anything? Does it hope Pete likes me? Or is it always just this, ah, this all-encompassing ground of being that is so yes, it doesn't even bother saying yes? <laughs> Look at what it allows. I just had a little bit of an epiphany that I don't know if I'm acing this, but I did have a weird epiphany when you made me imagine myself in a swimming pool. Yeah. Which is that I remember being so terrified that if I peed in the pool, it would be purple. Yeah. Remember they would yeah, tell yeah. you that? And it just made me realize the hundred things a day parents and adults told kids back then to just keep them scared all the time. Right. Like you're a bad girl and, you're, and God hates you. Or just you. like, yeah, don't, you're going to hurt yourself. Don't get on that. You're going to ruin your pantyhose. You're going to, if you pee, it's going to turn purple. If you go swimming a, 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 an hour after eating, you're going to get sick. Like just, yeah. that's how they had to control us. And I feel like I haven't, I've never thought about that, about everything I do. I'm like, this person's going to break your heart. You're going to suck if you do this. Yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. hurt yourself. Like, I'm I'm sorry if I didn't get no, you, you that did. right. But I saw that so clearly for the first time. That's great. That's the, I, and we can even have compassion for that. Everybody, you're going to embarrass yourself. This, this is bad. the constant of, am I going to embarrass yeah, you're myself gonna make at any water. moment? Yeah, there's a core negative belief. You're going to embarrass yourself. They're all going to laugh at I'm you. I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah. I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm going to be a burden. I'm going to cause a problem. The part that was missing was when you were that little girl, a, sp a specific memory. Don't let me give you one. Mine is when I was in my neighbor's pool. The question that Fred Davis asks is, was this sense of being 
there? And was it the same? Or was there a sense of being? Mm. And if I do that, it's hard to do it while you're talking about it. But you're like, yeah, it was this. This is why when I interviewed Norman Lear on my podcast, I was like, do you feel older? All old people say no. Mm. Your body is a phenomenon that appears in awareness. Oh. In your awareness. Oh, God. And we think because we close our eyes, it goes away. It must be originating behind our eyes or in our heads. But it's the same as a, a dream. Based on that, what plant medicine do I need to do? Based on how poorly that I <laughs> you didn't do handled poorly. that. You did wonderfly. Mm. I Really, I, I, I was, my only concern doing that is that it might just be a little overwhelming. When you start getting in touch with the fact that you are an aware Mm -hmm. field of consciousness sometimes that can be a little unsettling and if that was anybody listening or watching just get a weighted blanket and watch some friends mm -hmm. like you'll be okay like mm -hmm. it's okay and then when it feels safe to you can start it's a little bit like dabbling. oh you're just flying through space yeah but what's interesting is when you recognize yourself as awareness uh when people are like you see the earth and it's so small i'm like Buddy, we're all of it. Yeah. There is no size or yeah. distance or space. It's all, it's like a dream. It's all being made by and out of consciousness. So it doesn't matter if there's a nebula a hundred million light years away. That's still me. <laughs> and I don't mean Pete. <laughs> I no, I don't want to be selfish and keep you that much longer. But can I please just ask you as a parent, um, how I I feel like this is the main question I ask people for advice. Where do you stand on telling your kids about the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus? I'm all in. All in. Okay, because I I just trust you now, and I'm just curious with that. I'm all in. Santa Claus is a metaphor, and it's important to teach. Everyone's like, it's a lie, as if literal truth is the only kind of truth. Interesting. Richard Rohr said, taught me. Literal truth is the lowest level of truth. Because I feel like it's helpful if you want to build a bridge or do a surgery. I'm all. It's how we're. I being feel like recorded. I'm trying to deconstruct all this stuff as an adult and not be attached to all these rituals and what. But with kids, yeah, it's just you don't want to gaslight your kids. Kind of. Yeah, I I understand. First of all, Leela is so smart. I can see her putting it together. Like and, I know this is a tradition and a metaphor. Yeah, she's not sort like of. A literal she says guy. stuff all the time, like. But he's not real. She's only five. And, wow. And we've never hinted that he's not real. And we'll tell her. If she says something like that, I'll be like, he's real because we we believe in it. It's it's a thing that we're doing. It's a it's a way to understand. Joseph Campbell would say that Santa Claus is a metaphor to help us understand that what is done in secret is rewarded. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same reason I bring my daughter a gift when I come home from the road, because yeah. your patience is yes. rewarded. And it's the reward actually, of if you're not getting an actual gift, knowing you did the right thing when no one's watching always yeah. feels better. That's what Santa Claus is doing. Yeah. Right? But like turning him into a Gestapo or, or what we do with God, turning God into a lifeguard God and all he does is blow his whistle and mm -hmm. wag his finger and he's mad at you. There's a there's a danger. A lot of us are essentially worshiping a version of, of Santa Claus. And I'm not putting that down. That was me for a very long mm -hmm. time. It's okay. But at a certain point, you have to go like... Uh, it's not a pool, it's an ocean. And I'm not a person, I'm a fish. And there are no rules. Mm. <laughs> and it is unconditional love. It's not a punitive God that's keeping score. Have a God that's better than your boss at Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Mm. That's the language I've been looking for. That's yeah. a bit I'm working on. That's so. so genius. I have to write that down. No one ever gets to the cheesecake either. Oh, you're so full. It's I hate when they put the calories so in there. Because I used to get the chicken and <laughs> the biscuits. The salads are like 1,200 yeah. calories. The chicken and biscuits is 1,950 calories. I'm like, that's the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to eat that. That's and then the I'd rock's have... cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> like what? It's insane. It's... Don't don't you know what we're paying you for? I don't know where any of these statistics ever come from, but there's one of women get half their calories from salad dressing. Like salads yeah. tend to have the most calories when in seed oils or nobody either when you go to restaurants. In McDonald's, they were like, this is a 1300 because it's ranch dressing. Insane. Fucking... Yeah. Worth it. You want a salad dressing tip just to change altitudes? Please? Bring us back to earth a little bit. Please. My favorite salad dressing <laughs> Ooh. is, so you get a bunch of greens, good greens, not just kale. Get some fucking, get some Kale's of the lesser greens Kale's got some weird pesticides going on these days. That's not. I had a doctor say nuts. to me, like, D watch out for kale. I was like, I thought that was the thing that's going to. Dr. Um, McDonald. Uh, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Dr. Dre. <laughs> ah! <laughs>
No, I, I can't speak to that. I will say that if you get a bunch of greens, like mixed greens, mm-hmm. you know, spring mix, sure. something that's kind of tasty, and and some of the the harder ones, mm-hmm. put an avocado in it, mm-hmm. some lemon, and salt, and then a little bit of like apple cider vinegar, and then just mush it up. But the mushing is the key. It's kind of gross, but wash your hands and mush it up. It makes it all sloppy and and wet. Just avocado. Huh. So now you're eating huh. a whole food dressing. Sorry, if you saw me twitch, I can't see. I knew I was right. Here's what I will say. <laughs> Ego. I, I am right that he, I can't get anything past you. I was right. When I said that in the beginning, I was like, I have this thing with you where I feel like I can't get anything past you, which is like, it's as soon as you said Bragg's apple cider. Yeah. I, I, did you see me like twitch a little bit? Why? You don't like it? No, I'm on this. <laughs> she has a theory. I hate, it's not a theory. It's Bill Gates has bought Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Yes. And he puts his appeal apples in it. It's this cover on apples that keeps them fresh. I can't stop talking about it. I don't understand. He it's, keeps his apples fresh with so apple cider So Bill vinegar. Gates invented this thing that makes apples stay fresh for three weeks at Costco. It's a peel. It's this like schmegma that goes over an apple. Not good. Bad don't news. Say and I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't bring your cooter into this. Asshole. And then he <laughs> bought Bragg's and is putting his appeal apples in. So there's a lot of like natural things that are uh-huh. being bought up by okay. Big Core. Like Burt's Bees is owned by Clorox. I guess this is oh. my. This is your QAnon moment. This is my. <laughs> are you Q? What a disappointment. I guess. Look, I'm always eventually right. If yeah. you guys no. just go down this wormhole with me. Yeah. <laughs> Come in. The water's warm, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Are you suspicious of this or you feel okay about this? Well, I think it's, I definitely think it's bad news bears it, that appeal apples with whatever those chemicals are would be going into Bragg's. So we might need to get a different kind of apple cider vinegar. Oh, you mean the peel apples are being used to make in the Bragg's? Yeah. Oh, because he bought Bragg's and now apparently he's putting his. I have umbrella insurance. I can say this, but allegedly um, uh, protected by satire and parody. Let's make a joke real quick um, (laughs) about this. But yeah, so he's using those. It's just like a lot of times, Uh, like it's just so hard. Why would you need to see this is. Huh. Why would you need to preserve apples if you're going to make them into apple cider? That's a great point, but <laughs> like you're not thinking like a psychopath. I need you to step into the brains of a psych- where- of a billionaire psychopath. Bill Gates is poisoning us with his uh, magic wrapped apples that he doesn't need to preserve. Is it true? But the ones that need to be preserved are at Costco. But, but then, you know what's a great way to preserve them is turn them into apple cider. Apple cider vinegar. <laughs> and then they last, so, I Look, think I feel like at this point, Bill Gates is watching this podcast because I'm making this show for him. You made the briefing. For him at this point. Like I literally talk about his sinister yeah. antics every episode now. Um, they don't call me Ho Rogan for nothing. Um, Do they? No. (laughs) Just Ron Funches. I'd love to be on the whole Rogan experience. (laughs) A big break for me. But like just when you find out that like some natural like that natural shampoo brand, Jason, was bought by something, you know, it's like Smart Water was bought by by (laughs) Coca-Cola. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sort of like. (laughs) <laughs> don't 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 you think they put in something that they're like, well, you can't change it. You know Look, I, mean? I did have to go off Prozac when I got pregnant. So I think it's probably just that. <laughs> I think we're just there. I think yeah. we're nine months off Prozac it's territory, okay. whatever that is. It's okay. So in a couple of weeks, I'll go back on and let's see if I even remember talking about Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're like, are you nesting? I'm like, not really, but I am like in a very deep Reddit chat room about Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> That's sleep. Yeah. Try to do that for eight hours. Well, because also once you like, you know, you get pregnant and you're like, I got to order that baby powder. And they're like, you, we, that was full of asbestos. Like, oh, yeah. 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 I like put it on my registry. Formulas and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's all that shit. Well, they're now finding that there's microplastics in breast milk. So I, I, I don't know. No. Yeah. Breast milk is definitely... If the cows are, we are too. <laughs> this is a macroplastic <laughs> with the job I got. But the point is, I guess I'm just getting in some weird wormhole, which is probably just the the hole that religion would fill. I looking for know. truth, looking for order, looking for routine. Well, I, I was going to say this earlier. We really have to be careful, myself included, of course. The ego loves a spiritual path, but what I'm talking about isn't, uh, and what Rupert Spira, again, is talking about isn't a path. 
it's we've done it a couple times. We've dropped into it a couple times. Mm. It's right here. Mm. You are awareness. What could be more obvious? And the and the ego would like to make that a Bill Gates Reddit room and go like, if I do this, if I do ayahuasca, if I do mm -hmm. that, if I read this book or that book. And I've read books. I haven't done ayahuasca, but I'm just saying like I've done stuff like that. And it's all part of it. But there's a real temptation then to become the rich person obsessed with recycling and go like, it's the next teacher. It's the next guru. Mm -hmm. It's the next blessing. It's the next song. If I could learn the Hanuman Chalisa mm -hmm. in Hindu, I could do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, or you could just say, what is it that's aware of my desire to be enlightened? And does it need anything? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be enlightened? Mm -hmm. Does it need to... And I'm like really apples. worried about the people out there who need the health tonic of apple cider vinegar. Meanwhile, I need to just take care of myself. Yeah, I mean, Bill Gates is poisoning us. Is Bill? I'm poisoning us. I'm being. Oh, let's do it. Ooh, let's I don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> well, that one's easy because we don't know. How would I feel? <laughs> I wonder what the the belief there is. It's like if I'm not vigilant. Someone will kill me. And or all, what, or is poisoning all of us and everyone is, I, I, I guess it's like, I, it drives me nuts. Maybe this is like a little hang up when people get lied to, when they're, you're trying to eat something healthy and then you're getting course. lied to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have the same one. When people go to the zoo or a fake sanctuary because they think it's rescue and they spend money and it's actually, they're abusing animals. Like I hate when people get conned. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's lovely. Because we're the snitches, we're comics. We're the ones like, bah, 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 like, here's the thing. Yeah. Like, we kind of feel the need. To I still think about, there was a guy I knew on Facebook and and he was getting heavier and heavier and, and I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying he was getting bigger and he wasn't happy about it. And he posted a picture of a, like a yogurt drink that he got. And it was like trying, finally trying to be healthy. And I was like, it was like probably a 33 gram of sugar bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was marketed. There's a little kale on the cover. Sure, sure. I didn't engage, but I think about it all the time. It, why does that? <laughs> because we were con. <laughs> you know, like it hurts. It hurts to exploit people. It, I, I think that's a lovely impulse. And, I there's, and there's something about comics where we're the ones who go, look over here. I don't know about this. We're yeah. kind of the like, look over up, look up here, look up here type. Sorry. Hey, three. You. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look up here, look up here. Look at me. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> and they're right there. Yeah. Three amigos. Uh, doesn't get better. Thank you so much for doing this. Pete Holmes, I'm not for everyone. God damn it. This is, I laughed out loud many, many times. I preach. I don't know why that, me. it's just comics. We just don't do that. <laughs> I don't oh, know what I know what you mean. We just go, that's funny. That's smart. That's good. That means a lot. I'm so touched that you like it. No I one's done the ads marketed to you thing. Perfect. Like, oh, I don't I want to give it away. I, <laughs> I really appreciate So that. makes me angry. <laughs> Frustrating. <laughs> They wanted that to be the social clip, and I was like, "Can't ruin uh -uh. one of the best parts." No, of the no, whole no, thing. no, no, no. I do have this feeling. I go, I have to think I'm for somebody because I'm for me, and I like cooter jokes and talking about the prodigal son. Somebody else has to be like, "This guy's what I've been looking for," and I just have to find a lot of them. But you also really, I mean, your podcast that you made it weird was always so fun and funny and quick and blah, 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 and joke, 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 joke. But I think that like one of the most brutal things that can happen to a comic is they don't mature or feel like they I have agree. to always be funny. I remember um, to your point of something that you heard in the beginning from a big comedian that changed you forever. I watched something happen um, that affected me pr as profoundly as, you know, Bill Burr uh, having said that or Jim, Gaff Jim Gaffigan saying that to you. I was opening for a comic on the road and his big thing was his wife and I hate my wife and I don't have fresh and I this and <laughs> my wife and my wife and my wife and whatever. And he was divorced and he had been divorced for years and no one knew that. And there would have been no way to really corroborate it back then. Not that I would have wanted to, but yeah, I come off stage, get him. And I remember uh, right before he went on, he pulled a wedding ring out of his pocket and went. 
He has to wear his act. And had to put on a wedding ring to yeah. go out to pretend to be married. And I remember just being like, that's hell. Yeah. Let me at least just be the same person on stage and off stage. Oh, yeah. Because that looks like hell. I agree. You know, and I think podcasting is tricky because it's like whoever you are in the world, I think, is who we should be in podcasting. Sometimes I go, I'm not being funny enough. I'm being boring. I'm being this. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not people aren't listening to this in a room full of 3000 people drunk and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. They don't want that. It's annoying. No, we joke on you made it weird all the time. We go, we stopped trying to be funny years ago. <laughs> but that's not entirely. We do have really, really good laughs. But like, I'm so with you. But why can't we do both? Why can't we be both? Why but can't why we be can't, all the things? Why can't we grow and why can't we change? And, and the audience grows and changes with mm -hmm. you. Yes. And that's why I'm just like, you know, it's funny. We put my Batman videos. We made these Batman videos on the same YouTube as my podcast. And I was like, I think we have to separate them, which is fine because I don't think people that are looking for my Batman videos are looking for like deep conversations with a rabbi. Mm. And that's okay. <laughs> but I want to like find the right audience for everything. So it's always, I believe it exists though. I know, I know thousands of them exist, but I'm always trying to, I know there are more, I know there are more people that would be like, I like a good jizz joke. People and also, like, I, I want to like, be all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want all of it. But okay. it takes a certain, it took, I can't say what it takes for other people. It took me a long time to get to a point where I'm like, I'm all of it. Uh -huh. I'm, I love being a little bit mean or a little bit, or very dirty. Uh -huh. And then I also love talking about spirituality or Jesus or whoever it might be. And uh, accepting that I'm accepted and accepting all of me, I don't think much is gained in pretending like you don't have a shadow mm. or you don't have uh, foibles or flaws or hate or rage or whatever it might be. I think it's very beautiful to put that on stage and laugh at it. I also think two things. I also think people are relieved to know that we're okay. Yeah. You know, and I think people are done with like, oh, I'm watching these comics that are really funny, but like, are they going to die any minute? Like, yeah. I think they like seeing that we are trying to stay healthy and trying to, um, I yeah. think they root for us to go like, okay, you can do all these things, but like, I know you're okay. At the end of the day, I get I mean, to hear. I mean, I think you really said something interesting. In the past, there would be comics like this and that explode. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something beautiful and evolutionary about, evolutionary about mm -hmm. Having someone like Bill Burr, nobody's worried about Bill Burr. He's out eating a venison steak and doing chin-ups. Yeah, right, right, and he's right. He's okay. But it's like, we're out here trying to do this thing where a lot of the people that came before us just like died. Yeah. And succumbed to their addictions and their egos and their fears and their pain and their trauma. And we're trying to go like, we're trying to do that. We're trying to like stay alive here, guys. Yeah. And also staying alive means processing that stuff. They paved the way for us to safely process it. And they mm -hmm. maybe even motivated us to process it. Mm -hmm. Bill Burr has a great line where he's like, you watch musicians exploding. He's like, don't you guys watch behind the music? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we do now. Yeah. And we then also now. the last thing I'll say is I think comedians, it's our job to be surprising. That's what a joke is, right? Yeah. We lead you one way, we surprise you, surprise you. And I think that it, the onus is on us. Like maybe the most surprising thing to do sometimes is to be sincere and to be vulnerable, Yeah, you know? And then people get to know us this way and then they come see us and they're like, holy, and they're hilarious and they'll talk about poop and they'll talk right. about God. And right. it's our job to just not be the same all the time. Right. It's funny though, when you do a podcast, sometimes I go out and I do my out, my new hour and there's no God stuff in it. That's why I'm trying to write that Cheesecake Factory boss thing. Hmm. Uh, and I'm like, oh, wow. I bet a lot of people, not a lot, but I bet some of them were like, he didn't even do the thing that he does. You know, now I feel like. Thank God, in a way. No, I know. I agree. I yeah. agree. Keep them guessing. Yeah. But at a certain point, I, I am like, oh, I've made this lane for myself and I'd like to use it. Mm -hmm. now that I made it for, you know, other people do it. But I'm just saying, I'd like to use it. I'm in. If you're starting a cult, I'm in. What are we wearing? What are we doing? We just go to World Market. <laughs> they have good candy. <laughs> I love their candy. They have good side tables. The whole thing, your baby, you, me, in uh -huh. your life right now. Yeah. Whitney, I'm going to be gone. I haven't seen you in years. Probably won't see me for years. Years. Again. It's fine. But right now, this everything, everything you're reading, everything you're hearing, it's all a trick orchestrated by the only one there is, the only one thing that's happening to tripwire you to fall back mm -hmm. into and then I turn into coats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm so in, I'm telling you, if you start a call, I'll, however much it costs, I'm so in, dude. I'm so in. Give your purse phone. Uh, my, I know, why, why, 
Why is this dorky? Okay, this is like the new pocket protector now that my phone uh, no, has a no. strap. I just said, look at your purse phone. No, I know that. exactly where it is because I never lose it. Has my credit cards on the other side. That's great. Okay, everyone I know can never find their phone. Got mine right here. That's good. Whatever. That's good. That's good. Every now and then you bend over and it yes it hits you in the face, there but that's go. also fine. You got the Chewbacca phone. This is it. Why is this dorky? It's not. I'm norm core, dude. I'm norm core till I die. Orlando Taurus for life is my aesthetic. Dude, I'm like about to be mom. I have fanny packs. I got, I wait till I show you my new vest that is like a tactical vest with pockets. <laughs> I just got a generator. Dude, I'm ready to be off the grid. Yeah, you are. I love you. I end these awkwardly. Don't ride elephants. Pete Holmes. I'm not for everyone. LOL. 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 I hate your guts. Oh my, I hate your guts. <laughs>